Welcome to Family Gamer TV. So the day's finally arrived. We've been talking about it for an awfully long time. And Disney Infinity um, is launched. It's launched in the US um, on the 18th and come to the other territories um, soon afterwards. I think it's in the UK around the 23rd. So we've been playing it. We had it in our hands. Um, as you've seen in our unboxings, the kids have been um, sort of playing with the toys. Some of them are already bearing the marks of combat already. And we've been really sort of getting to grips with what is Disney Infinity. So I think the first thing to say is, look, this isn't Skylanders. I know from the, from the um, initial impressions, because it has the Infinity base, the portal and the figures which, which sit on it, give you access in the game. It looks a lot like Skylanders. Um, but actually how that technology is being leveraged is completely different. So um, whereas in Skylanders you'll be um, upgrading characters um, and saving it straight back to the figure, um, a very, they would work really, really hard to create a close connection between the player um, and the in-game character and then the toy. Of course, Disney doesn't have to do that because we already have a close bond with these characters. We already know who Mike is. We already know who Randall is. And so it uses the technology in a different way. Now, at the centre of the experience is the toy box world. Now, this is a space where you can create your own games. Um, so you get, you get planted in there. You have a really nice little introduction where it leads you through an interactive sort of gamey sort of um, rendition of all the different franchises that will be um, in this, this iteration of Disney Infinity. And we've seen the Wave 1 um, um, figures as we've got them out here, some down on the bottom shelves. So we've got cars, we've got Monsters University, we've got Pirates of the Caribbean, um, we've got um, The Incredibles, and um, we've also got Lone Ranger. Um, and we also got coming in wave two some more figures and a Mickey Mouse character I'm quite looking forward to, Phineas and Ferb, um, but also a new playset um, for Toy Story. So that introduction takes you through the different worlds you're going to be playing in, then plants you in the toy box space. Now there you quickly, quickly realise that you can actually start editing that world. Not only planting things in it and tweaking the edges, but completely removing bits, adding bits and making it your own space. This leads you into a whole sort of construction element of the game, which is a lot like um, Little Big Planet um, or the Create game from EA that was a while ago. Um, and sort of these experiences that let the player loose with the tools that a developer usually has. Can you see me? Ella's making loads of people. <laughs> Watch out, I think they might... Are they friendly? Yeah. Don't run them over! Oh no! I think they like you, they're following you. <laughs> oh! Yeah, you <laughs> can't run them over! What other things are there to put, add? Why don't you make... Frog! Uh oh! Uh -oh. Why don't you add some trees, Ellen? Make it make a nice place. Then around this toy box experience and a way to get access to around a thousand toy elements to bring into that space um, are these campaign games, these play sets. Um, now, in the starter pack, and that's what we're going to be limiting our review to here, um, you get um, Monsters University, you get The Incredibles and you get Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, each of these different um, campaigns plays in a similar sort of way. So they're all two player local co-op. Um, apart from the Wii version, which is only a, a one-player game, they're also open world, so they're all mission-based, and you get given particular missions, and you have to sort of go off and fetch things, or you have to go and escort missions. And in, in and through that mission is a whole um, developing world of combat. So what starts off as a quite simple sort of one-button attack, you soon learn combos, and by investigating the different characters, by um, getting them to learn new moves. Uh, you, you get these more powerful attacks, you use more buttons and you're a more button combinations. So the sense that you're getting better at playing the game. Oh, you just knocked me off, Ollie. Oh, he's hitting me. I just, oh, he, he's hit my car. Oh, you've got, you've got, got and then, it's the, as well. then you can use the triggers. Do you know what the triggers are, Ollie? Do we eat? Yeah, you stay like this. Where do we need to go? Oh, yeah, we follow the arrow. Follow the green arrow. Uh, are you having a bit of problems with the hand? Yes, something I need to get out of my, my, my car and fight. I'm going to walk. Yeah, I think walking might be better. Ha. Go and get the guys. Just kill that How do I get guy. Out? Press B to get out. But we need to talk. There you go. Talk you can just him. follow the follow the green arrow. Where's Tom? He'll, he'll be at the green arrow. It will keep you together. I just talked to the um. 
Now this is a little bit like the previous games we've seen from Avalanche Software, the Toy Story and the Cars games. And you can see the quality and the experience of doing that really shines through here. So there's a real sense of panache and of sort of sparkle as you sort of explore these worlds. They don't only really look good, but, um, but they also feel like good spaces to play in. You can approach things at your own pace, so you can choose which mission to do next. And you can also just take time to explore the world. They're all open world spaces and in them are hidden all sorts of elements you can find. Some of these are just destructibles, which give you money and sparks, which is a currency for the toy box world. Um, but also there are little capsules and in those capsules are one off toys. And by unlocking those, um, by finding those in the game world, you then have them in the toy box. And this back and forth between the campaign and the toy box is something that slowly sort of takes you back into the game world, back into those campaigns and back to the toy box to play and invent and have some fun. And then you think, oh, maybe I need some more. So you go back into the campaigns. And this sort of to and fro has worked really well for my family. Now these campaigns aren't super long, I think they last around five to seven hours for most players. Although if I'm looking at the way my kids are playing it and they're so distracted with all different things to go and explore, I think it actually might take them a bit longer. And of course even after you finish the missions you can still go back to collect all those collectibles um, just to explore the world and maybe just have a play. They quite like just going into those toy box worlds and playing around. Um, they quite like going into those um, playset worlds and playing around. Now, one limitation in the playset is that you can't um, cross the stream. So you couldn't take um, Lightning McQueen into the Monsters University playset, and you couldn't take Dash into the um, Cars playset. Now, this is a limitation to try and keep that sort of purity of franchise and world in those story spaces. Um, so where you can com where you can combine those different franchises is back in the toy box and really there your imagination is is your only sort of limit and you can mix and match to your heart's content but my kids were slightly disappointed that they couldn't just go and choose whichever figure they wanted they had to think okay what playset are we going to put onto the infinity base to unlock that particular playset world and then they would get out each of the different sets of characters they were playing so if they're playing the Incredibles we pick the Incredible playset put that on then they go and rifle through our collection and our collection was quite Quite big so we had all the wave one figures um i don't think we'll be keeping them all um and then put those up on the shelf so they had those ready to play yes. the baddie guy i don't know i've never played him so we've never played with him before no, no, me, me, cause I'm me. okay then. so we've got all our incredibles there Women? Now the other big difference between Infinity and Skylanders is how characters are upgraded. So you have these power disc tokens in um, Disney Infinity, whereas in Skylanders obviously you're just you're doing a permanent upgrade on the figure. So um, if, you, if you upgrade Bouncer, you apply an upgrade and it's there forever. But these discs you put on the, on the Disney Infinity base, I'm trying not to call it a portal, um, underneath your character on the base and it gives them that power temporarily. And each of the discs um, relates to a particular Disney character. You buy those discs in blind packs, in foil sealed packs, um, and you get a few in each pack and they cost maybe five pounds or so um, and you sort of build up a collection. It means you can mix and match the different tokens. Now, of course, this is going to give, um, I think, some parents a little more sort of reason to criticise the game in terms of value because it's a whole other retail stream for um, gamers to go and buy. But I, I quite like the way, actually, it gives a, a new sort of swappable element to the game so that my kids will be taking in their, their tokens, their power disc tokens to school. And I'd be quite happy for them to take those in, swap them in the playground, then come home, put them on the infinity base and see what those new powers are. Whereas I wouldn't want them to do that with the figures themselves because they're just too much high value. They'd get all sorts of disagreements and trouble at school, I'm sure. Oh, there you are. We're going to put this on, which is a Mulan um, token. Hello. Oh. Hey, that's a topic. So, Ollie, do you want to put this one on the on the um? Tom, that goes with the castle. It does. Okay, and then and then going to do this in the castle. Oh, you know I can't see it. Okay, put it on. We're going to sit down. It's in the Willow's castle. You got a horse. It's in the Willow's castle gone. So there's now a horse from Mulan. Oh, there's racing track. And you can ride the horse. You can make your own racing track. You can. We put on the token. So the other token, can you pass me that token on? Because you've got that, haven't you? That so this token at the bottom, you can see um, the paints. image there. Ah. It's a paintbrush, which means it gives it, gives it a theme. And the icon at the bottom of the horse um, means it's an object you, you can ride. 
there you go. I hope you're getting a sense of how much fun we're having with Disney Infinity. Um, I was slightly sceptical of it before getting my hands on the full game. I and mean, in particular, the toy box mode. I just thought that would be too complicated. In the past, I've tried to get my kids on Little Big Planet and games like that to go and create something. And even when I'm involved and in actually doing it for them, it still takes a lot of work and effort to do that. But as you can see um, here, I'll put a little video up. Um, they actually got to grips with it really quickly and were soon adding things to their own world, driving around, jumping, exploring the things they'd made, adding enemies and even adding a bit of logic to those sort of circuits they're making. Um, and all without my help, you know, that was quite quickly. So I was really impressed by the simplicity of that. You don't get all the elements um, unlocked in the toy box at first, which I think for young players is quite good. Potentially for older players, it may be slightly frustrating that you can't go and create in-depth, detailed sort of logic gates um, but before you've actually gone through some of the play sets. And you, you have to earn and unlock those thousands of um, toy box um, elements by playing the game or by spending sparks to spin the wheel and getting one at random. What's that? Enemy creator, do that. What's that do? Go on. It, it creates enemies. Yeah, I want to see the enemies, see if you can, you can beat them. So put it down. There's loads of enemies coming now. Yeah, but that's a different one. So then go over, go over to it. Oh, you might want to drive. Get my car. Yeah. Or well, somebody's car. You're gonna get in it. Yes. <laughs> you just, you just like um, beating it up. I love beating it up. Hey, look, you got a horn. And as well as that, in the, in the campaign, the two-player split screen has meant that my boys have managed to play it much more amicably than Skylanders. Now they love playing Skylanders, and they love fighting and squabbling while they're playing it as well. But while playing um, Disney Infinity, um, there was a lot less of that because it was a split screen. They could and, and an open world. They could each go their own way, and in fact. They were working harder to try and communicate to each other. I'm over here, Tom, you know, come and help me. I need some help with this. Or I'm over here, Ollie, why don't we go over there? Um, and actually working together because they had the freedom to go the way they wanted. And they weren't forced and tied by that string and tethered to each other. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a feature that Skylanders looks at and thinks, actually, maybe we'll need a split screen option in a future version of Skylanders. Ah, got some company here, Tom. Who are you? Here. Well, where is here? I don't know what he's here. I tricked him There he is. He's down into the street. What was he? Hey, I remembered what Mr. Incredible was called. Do you remember what he's called? In real um, life? Bob. 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 <laughs> Bob the Builder. <laughs> In addition to that split screen on the 360 and PS3 and Wii U, you can also play online. So you can take a two-player local co-op, take that um, online and play with maybe family or friends, two players as well. So so my kids can play with their cousins and there'll be two playing here and two playing um, up in Birkenhead. Um, and they could then co collaborate to complete the missions, say, in the, in the, um, the Incredibles world. And again, explore that open world at their own pace. So Disney Infinity has got a lot going for it. Now, it's not perfect by any means. There were some occasions where the uh, Infinity base seemed to stop recognising my figure just once. I think I switched it at a particular moment. Maybe there was, was a cutscene running. I haven't managed to replicate it, but it, it wouldn't then let me mix and match again afterwards. And also, um, there was a couple of moments when I was playing as Dash and he has this sort of um, hyper jump punch where he sort of warps towards the enemy and hits them. And that seemed to get dislocated. And wherever I pressed the button, he seemed to walk back to the wall of a building that he'd been stood at. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get him off of that without switching another figure in. Obviously, these are minor things. Um, but I think this quality and keeping an eye on that quality is going to be key for Disney Infinity um, as, as they go forward. For families, I think this is almost a must buy. Certainly, if you're in the Skylanders sort of age group, certainly one to be looking at as well. Um, a great alternative to Skylanders. I love the, the split screen play, the toy box mode. There's a huge amount of value here. One thing you need to be careful of is, is steer clear of feeling like you need to buy all the figures. You know, there's plenty of other products in the market that offer ranges of, of sort of collectible products, maybe um, Lloyd Grossman's cooking sauces. Now, if you got into buying all those sauces, um, you spend many hundreds of pounds. And of course, that's not the point. You need to home in on the ones you actually want and the ones you enjoy. And the same is true of Disney Infinity. Buy the starter pack, play it to death and then work out what few figures um, you also need to buy. And then for what my kids will be doing, 
um, once we've passed these on to friends and family, is using their pocket money um, to, to buy just the particular figures that they want to do, rather than feeling like you've got to buy the whole collection, because that's where you're going to get into spending, I think, more money than is really you're going to really see a value return for. So there you go, that's the Family Gamer TV review of Disney Infinity. We'll be covering the game, we'll be doing some Let's Play videos that you've seen us starting already, so keep it locked to the channel. If you can subscribe, that means that we can send you a little email or a notification whenever we put a new video up, so you can be first in. And there seems to be quite a nice habit of trying to get the first comment and be, uh, be first, so you get a better chance of doing that if you're a subscriber. Um, like the video, but also give us a comment. We really like and engaging with, with our viewers. So tell us what you think about this game. Tell us what other games you think we should be covering, um, but just get involved.